Do, 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 Good morning and welcome to Thursday Morning Conversations. I am Doodle Harris, Associate Pastor at Highland Presbyterian Church, and we're joined today by Angie Andriot. Angie is a ruling elder at Highland, and she also works downtown at the center doing something with numbers and surveys. What is it, Angie? I'm a sociologist of religion, and I um, analyze data on congregational vitality, and I track the 1001 New Worshiping Communities Movement and study emergent church. That sounds so much more exciting than she works with numbers. I do have a spreadsheet up, like, right now, though, because I, um, you know, hold on just a sec. One thing at a time. There, done. <laughs> well, thanks for joining us this morning. I want to start off with some announcements, and Angie is even going to help me on the first announcement. This Sunday kicks off our book study of White Too Long at 5 o'clock p.m., and Angie, since you're one of the panelists, do you want to tell us more about that? Uh, White Too Long is a challenging book to read. It's really um, difficult to get through, not like intellectually, but emotionally, and I highly recommend it. So we're going, <laughs> we're going to be talking about it Friday, uh, five or Friday. Sunday. We're going to be talking about it Sunday at five and you'll get to hear from me and Kevin Burns and Joe Phelps and hear a little bit about Southern Baptist Seminary in Louisville and white Christianity's complicity in racism and slavery. Um, well, thanks. That sounds cheery. It is appropriate for Lent. Okay, fair, fair enough. <laughs> um, other opportunities at this week at Highland include a continuation of the Horizons Bible Studies that um, is every other Wednesday at two o'clock. Please let the church office know if you'd like to participate and we'll send you the Zoom link. Adult confirmation classes continue on Sunday afternoons. Angie's a part of those. They're and really good. <laughs> they are, they are fun. We great conversations. And uh, we also have our Lenten devotions that are being distributed now. If you would like to be on the list to receive our Lenten devotions, just let Rob Miller know and he will put you on that email distribution list. Uh, maybe the most important announcement I have is that I'm going on vacation next week. So Highland Prez, uh, Megan Barry will be taking over the Thursday morning conversations. So I hope you'll tune in next Thursday morning uh, to have a conversation with Megan Barry and longtime Sunday school teacher, uh, Becky Slagle at Highland. Before we talk with Angie, I also want to go over our birthdays this week from February the 21st to February the 27th. So happy birthday, Pam Phelps. Let me tell you, Pam Phelps once hiked Lookout Mountain with me in Montreat, North Carolina, and I really appreciate her for that. Um, also happy birthday to Catherine Tillett, Kitty Nowak, Leland Howard, John Hamlet, Bo Squires, John Toner, Tess Barrick, Claire Burgess, Bill Grubbs, Kathy Hobart, Lydia Kim, Charlie Shatt, Henry Gritton, Caroline Schutz, Worth DeWeese, Charlie Groman, Patty Hartog, Paulette McClure, and this Saturday, as well as some of those folks, it is the birthday of Larry Etheridge. Larry Etheridge has been recovering from back surgery, and he would like lots of cards and phone calls to wish him a happy birthday. So Highland Press, if you're free on Saturday, let me know. I can give you his address or his phone number so you too can call and wish Larry Etheridge a happy birthday. All right, Angie, you're in the spotlight. I have some questions for you. Uh, before we get started um, talking about your new 1001 Worshiping Community, I want to ask you, like, how long have you been at Highland and why do you stay? What's so special about Highland? I have been at Highland for six years, so I'm still relatively new to Highland. And I stay because, I, well, because I really like it. Um, and I love the feasting class. That is one of my favorite parts of Highland that we've still been going strong through the pandemic and we get together every morning every Sunday morning before church and we talk about the um, whatever scripture is going to be there and it's such a great conversation and I love that Highland's starting to get, to get into arts and had actually has started a worshiping arts committee as an artist I love going to a church that is both 
intellectually inclined and also creative. That combination is really hard to find. But you know what lured me to Highland to begin with was of all the churches I visited, Highland was the only one where I showed up and people invited me to sit with them in the pews. Um, someone invited me to their Sunday school class. Yeah, I was invited to things. That's amazing. Keep talking like that, Angie, and you're going to be on the fellowship committee. <laughs> <laughs> also, Angie, thank you for chairing the fellowship committee. Yeah, yeah. I was invited to do that too. And my <laughs> invitation is a double edged sword, let me tell you. <laughs> well, you do a great job. Oh, you know, we've been at Highland only six years, but is that long enough to have a favorite Highland t-shirt yet? Ah, yes, yes. And I brought it. Um, I actually have three Highland t-shirts. So you need um, more. <laughs> I mean, I feel like I should get one per year. Like we should have an annual Highland t-shirt. That is fair. Yes. It could be part of our creative process. You know, we could have a contest for who gets to design the annual Highland t-shirt. I love it. Okay, we'll talk about that later. That's a great idea. <laughs> <laughs> but I brought my Black Lives Matter t-shirt from Highland because um, I like it because it is a socially aware shirt that shows that Highland is not just creative and intellectual, but also trying to be um, Jesus out in the world and promote the least of these. Absolutely. Absolutely. I'm glad. I'm glad you said that. I hope we are. Um, so we invited you today to talk about your new um, 1001 worshiping community. But before we do that, can you fill us in, catch us up on what is this 1001 new worshiping community thing? 1001 new worshiping communities is Presbyterian Church USA's um, institutional attempt to harness the energy around the emergent church movement. So the emergent church movement started in um, England, but it is really just this idea that in order to reach people nowadays, we need to be um, outside of institutions in general because there's such a distrust of institution and a distrust of organized religion. And so allowing um, seeds to plant themselves and grow independently of institutional control. And so 1001 New Worshiping Communities is all about, and we call them worshiping communities instead of churches, because again, we're working in that sort of, you know, marginal space between Christianity and the spiritual, but not religious population. Uh, that's fair. I, I like the way you said that. And the way you said the seeds that might grow, you have a seed you're planting it with the help of Highland, but not um, exclusively. Um, but tell us about your seed. Uh, my seed is Lyman Place, and Lyman is the root word of liminal, and, and we're trying to harness that idea of liminal space in a couple ways. We're, um, we're really working on trying to be spiritual but not religious and get to those people and also in that liminal space of um between the secular and the sacred and so what we've designed is a contemplative creative community where we want to focus on spiritual formation and especially spiritual formation through the arts arts and crafts actually um actually i came up with a list of what our upcoming projects are going to be and they really do um harken back to my days as an elementary art teacher. That sounds like fun. Who, <laughs> I, I, you know, I love those days. Uh, tell me, like, who is this for? Who might come and, and what might they experience? This is for people who are interested in contemplative practices like, you know, the Zio Divina, meditation, centering prayer, and also have an affinity for elementary art projects. <laughs> I love it. Um, so, so Highland's a pretty traditional Presbyterian church. Like what does Highland gain or what does Highland learn in, in supporting this endeavor? Well, 
yeah, Highland is very traditional. I've heard it referred to as buttoned up. <laughs> <laughs> and also high church. I think all of those are fair. <laughs> um, and so I guess what one thing Highland would gain is something that's very buttoned down. I'm not going to say low church, <laughs> but <laughs> um, something a little bit more loosey goosey, I guess. <laughs> And you know what Highland doesn't have, we are so all the things that I was drawn to Highland, the intellectual focus, the deep biblical exegesis. How do you pluralize that? I don't know. Exegesis. I have no idea. <laughs> but <laughs> exegetical exercises. Yeah, there we go. <laughs> uh, those are awesome. And that's what drew me to Highland. But what I have still been seeking on my own is spiritual formation, um, not intellectually, but more, you know, emotionally and as a daily practice. And so being able to incorporate that and reach out to people who would never step foot inside of buttoned up church. That is so fair. I mean, John Calvin used to say, while well, he was alive, um, that uh, it's important that we worship God with both our heads and our hearts. And I love that you, in my understanding, you're really trying to speak to that heart part um, Yes. Uh, of worship. I mean, I don't want to impose God on who might come, but uh, of, of something bigger and, and greater out there. Yeah. And I mean, just for personally, like I grew up I mean, I, Highland was the first Christian church I ever attended. And a large part of that is because I was always one of those spiritual, but not religious people and seeking something and never even attempting Christianity because I had all these negative associations, you know, about what Christianity is. And those associations weren't debunked until I started working at the center. And so I know that there's plenty of people out there like me who probably would thrive within a Christian context, but would never, ever give it a shot um, on their own. Thanks for trying. Thanks for doing that. Thanks for experimenting and taking a chance and letting us walk with you in that. I'm, I'm just so excited to see where it goes and, and who might show up. I, th I think this is a such a cool opportunity for us to witness um, and appreciate the, the spirit working. So I'm excited about that. All right, Angie, all of Highland Prez is watching you right now. They're so excited. What else do you want to say? It could be about Lyman Place or anything else. You have our captive attention. Do you have anything else you'd like to say? <laughs> well, it, um, I would say about Lyman Place that we're um, going to have announcements in the March newsletter, but we are starting um, two monthly circles. One of them is contemplative practices where we get together and meditate and um, just be together in silence. And the other one is the art projects where we <laughs> learn about contemplative arts and make stuff together. And I'm really looking forward to when we can get together in person and do that. I think we all are. I, I miss us a lot. I do too. So thanks. I'm looking forward to, I don't know how well I'm going to do with the real quiet part, but I'm looking forward to the arts part. <laughs> Other people will do better with the quiet parts. <laughs> I'm good with the quiet parts, actually. I'm not much of a talker normally, so sitting together in silence with people sounds nice. <laughs> Well, I think I would be amiss if I didn't also thank you while you're here for the artwork you're doing on Sunday morning during worship for the next few weeks. That's That was exciting to watch the first installment of this past week, and I can't wait um, to see where that goes. I'm, I'm excited that you agreed to do that. Is that still feeling like, does that feel good to you? Is that exciting? Is that scary? It, is, it was really scary. I mean, it wasn't really scary. I was nervous going in there, like, what if I mess up? And I even painted a practice. Hold on. I even painted a practice sheep like the week before I started to make sure I could do it because I didn't want my first time ever painting a sheep to be like in front of, you know, hundreds of people or whatever. <laughs> and so 
I practiced one just to make sure I could and that I was ready. But then seeing that canvas, it's so big. The canvas is almost as tall as I am. And we actually are going to have to like lower it and lift it depending on what I'm working on that day because I can't reach the whole thing at the same time. Wow. <laughs> All the new challenges of being a church right now. Who knew? I know. But you know what? I think this pandemic has been a blessing in a few ways because some of the stuff that started with Highland, we started the Facebook group mm -hmm. because of the pandemic. And, you know, people are using that a little bit. <laughs> and we started the Worship Arts Committee because of the pandemic. Yep. And so this me painting and worship is only the first of many things that's going to be happening that where we try to create, include creative experiences in the worship process. And that the park pop-ups is in, as a result of the pandemic, these interviews. Right. Because we just and, missed, I'm just seeing faces. Yeah. And you know, when I'm on um, the rare time where I'm actually watching service and usually so this me painting in service at church the only difference is I'm doing it live on camera because normally every Sunday I'm here in this room during worship painting on my easel and listening so it's not a huge um, jump so I'm not usually seeing what they put up what y'all put up um, I don't even see it but the occasional time when I am watching, it's been neat seeing people from all over the country pop in and say hi and that they're watching too. Yeah, I love all that. over the world, not just country. Yeah. Yeah, I saw that. Uh, that it's cool. It, it definitely feels like we're reaching beyond um, beyond our usual community right now. Yeah, and a lot of churches are doing that like. Um, we did a study in the early part of COVID through work on the pandemic and how it's changing church. And we're planning to do a follow-up study on how the pandemic has changed church a year later. And it's going to be a year soon. I can't handle that. Oh, I was, I was so sad to realize that a few days ago, like every single holiday, every single birthday we have now lived through in a pandemic. Yeah. It's hard. Yeah. All right, and, and Angie, been, go ahead. I'm one C. I, I would be one C if I lived in Kentucky, which they just announced we'll be able to get vaccines in March. But oh no, I'm in Indiana. So where, where when does Indiana start, or when do you, they when? haven't even announced it, it? But one my my group would not be next because um, they're still a couple steps behind. They're doing it age wise almost entirely, so it's hard telling. But the first list of comorbidities, um, heart conditions aren't even on it. Wow, I'm sorry. So, <laughs> well, uh, you know, I, even though we've talked about some things that are tough to talk about, I, it has brightened my day. It always talking with you, Angie, makes me feel good, warm and fuzzy, creative on the inside. Um, I appreciate you and what you're doing for our community and what you're doing for what might be our potential next community. So uh, love your creativity, love your inspiration, love your connection with the Holy Spirit, dare I say it that way, but. Um, I got a direct line. If, if anybody needs to know anything, just. I am convinced there are certain people with more direct lines than others. I'm not gonna lie. I, I do believe you might be one of those. Uh, I've seen it too often. I, I think it's true. Well, Highland Press, hope you will tune in next week with a conversation between Megan Barry and Becky Slagle. Hope you will enjoy that conversation, but not as much as you've enjoyed this one because I can't wait to be back with you in a couple of weeks. Again, thanks so much, Angie. And I hope you all have a great uh, week, Lent. And we'll talk soon. Great Lent. <laughs> Bye, everybody. <laughs>